On this week's Flame Central, Liberty football makes history and class is in session as Hugh Freeze takes us inside the film room. Plus, the preseason polls are out for Liberty Hoops and we go inside a softball scrimmage. Flame Central starts right now. No voting necessary. We already know we're America's favorite show, right? <laughs> Welcome to Flame Central. Alongside Rhett McGibbon, I'm Matt Warner. Yeah, you know, Matt, voting was a hot topic this mm. past week, and that's where we begin today's show, but we're not talking about politics. <laughs> Don't you worry, we're talking college football's top 25. Oh, uh, right, I thought you were about to be divisive there oh. for a second. <laughs> that's a knack you have, I know. Uh, as if 6-0 to start the season wasn't great enough, History was made this past week when the AP Top 25 was released. For the first time in Liberty football history, Rhett, the Flames Love cracked it. the Top 25. Oh, yeah. They were ranked 25th in the AP poll that was released this past Sunday. Top 25 in just the program's second full season in the FBS. A ridiculous rise, and head coach Hugh Freeze knows how important an achievement like this is for his Flames. You know, I like doing things that are first. I've said that. This is uh, one of our things on our checklist. Um, now, how hungry are you to stay there and, and be relevant um, and be talked about? It doesn't happen uh, in year two of uh, full FBS very, very often. This week has, has been special. It's a milestone in our program. It's one that uh, hopefully our kids and their families can celebrate for years to come. Well, great to see history being made for the Flames. Emily Austin joins us now. And Emily, you had the opportunity that most people would probably play oh, yeah. big money for, and that's sit down in a film room with Hugh Freeze. Yeah, right. It was such a cool experience. I was like a sponge just soaking in all of his football knowledge. I'm so interested to figure out, you know, we see all the results from the big plays, but I'm so interested to find why and when he makes these play calls, and there's so much more that goes into these decisions. Let's talk some football. All right. Welcome inside the Flames film room here with head coach Hugh Freeze, an elite play caller, one of the best offensive minds in college football. We start at Southern Miss in the fourth quarter. You guys are up two scores. Talk me through this situation. You know, we had lost momentum uh, in the third quarter. You're searching and trying to find out something about your kids, obviously, and try to take the momentum back. And we were able to do that and, and now Right here, we're trying to put the game away. Malik Willis has some room to run. He's going to take it the distance. One of our 12 personnel, two tight end sets, and uh, run some inside zone. Earlier, we just sealed this and tried to, uh, you know, run inside zone with the tailback. You know, anytime you can get Malik on the edge, and, and obviously we've got two for two here, so he's running on the high safety with all this grass. That's an advantageous matchup for us. Tight ends both do an outstanding job here, as does uh, freshman C.J. Daniels of getting in great position to make key blocks on this uh, on this play, and then Malik wins his one-on-one. -on -one. What have you taught Malik? Who is he reading here on whether to keep the ball or? Yeah, as you see it, he's reading 94 here. If 94 shoulders get turned like that, it's going to be very. He has to be a tremendous athlete. What? makes 94 do this is the action of uh, Hunley here. He, he does a good job and uh, again, we had only run the set one time earlier and we just ran zone seal, which he blocked him. And we really felt like when we saw the way he took on Johnny's block that they might have a problem, you know, if we, if we slip him and then pull the ball with Malik. You had a couple plays in the Syracuse game that you uh, were saving and wanted to use in key yeah. moments. One was when you were lying in bed the night before the game. It was this <laughs> one, I believe. What is this, the H Sluggo? It is. It's H Sluggo. Uh, I mean, it's obviously it's something I've run before, but you know, it was not in the game plan. I just woke up thinking about their personnel and advantageous matchups if I could get them. And this was the first thing that popped in my mind. Man, if I can get Stubbs or DeMario matched up on this guy in man coverage, I, I really, really think we ought to run the Sluggo. So I told our guys, came up Saturday for our staff meeting that morning, and said, hey, I'm gonna put in this, uh, I'm gonna put in H Sluggo. And so we went and walked through it, you know, in our 15 minute walk through that morning and 
And uh, sure enough, man, I was waiting and waiting and to, to get this. Uh, we had it in the first half, but I didn't want to go to it just then because I thought we might need a little later and this really helped us uh, put the game away. And as soon as uh, I saw this structure, I thought, oh gosh, we got it. Malik keeps it, fires deep, open man, has the touchdown. We never even ran it in a practice. Unbelievable. And then they have to tell me, hey coach, man, can you give us one time, you know, give us till the next series so we can talk them through that. Or they'll say, I, I think our kids can handle that. All right, we'll move on to FIU. Towards the end zone, the catch is made! Oh my! DJ Stubbs one hands it! Obviously some of the plays we've talked about have a direct progression. But this one does not. This one is, have I and Kent done a good enough job with this guy post-snap to know which field he should play on? Here's field one, here's field two, here's field three. Looking at it right now, I would not be mad at him if he played on this field or this field. Just don't play on this one. <laughs> That's not a good look. I, I don't want, I don't want, I don't want to play here. And so then if, if we feel like this field and this field are about equal, you know, which matchup do I really like? Mm -hmm. and, you know, we feel good about our slots and our matchups and that's the one he took. The throw is exactly where it has to be with the leverage the defender has and, and, and you know, what a great individual effort uh, by Stubbs here. How much have you seen Malik's decision making improve in oh, such a short amount of time? Yeah, it's the difference in him now and even fall camp, especially the few days we had a spring, is uh, monumental. I mean, he's, you know, Coach Austin is one of the best quarterback coaches I've ever been around. I'm a big picture guy. I'm like, I want to run this, 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 and this. You figure out exactly how his feet should be, and <laughs> and all. That's not my gifting. I'm nowhere near the uh, attention to detail. The, the detail part of, of of fundamentals of quarterback like Ken is. Um, and it, that's why I think we're a really good combination. We're going to end against Southern Miss. To throw, middle, there it is, Chris Barrett in the end zone, light him up. Why did you call this play? Yeah, this is, uh, we had a, this landmark, um, so I'm big on, I don't carry a lot on my call sheet. Uh, I'm more of a, a gut guy, but I do carry my landmarks, which, um, you know, I knew if I got the ball on the left hash, between the 15 and 20, this was a call. If I wanted to take a shot to score a touchdown, this was what I had landmarked there. We had run the run action out of this earlier with the swing to Peyton and a bend concept to the boundary. And these two guys really, really uh, jumped the swing and so I knew immediately then when I get to that landmark, they're going, they better not do that again <laughs> um, because uh, he'll slip it and, and have a good chance to be, you know, wide open. And these two guys hold the backside safety there. And so you'll see us create a three man surface. And now it's all about how they decide to fit it. Mm -hmm. And again, they both fit the, uh, the swing. Where do you think your play call ability came from? I think. Maybe it's because I was raised in it. Um, you know, I remember as a little boy sitting in old field houses with my dad and his and the staff he was on and watching those 16 millimeter <laughs> films. And then, you yeah. know, they literally had to cut the, the, <laughs> the, the, the tape up and, you know, you have them spliced and taped. You see all the dust in the air. And, yeah, you had them taped all <laughs> over the wall because, you know, you had, you had to splice it. Well, here's all the first down ones and you'd cut the, the tape and hang it up. and. Was there a specific moment where you realized that you had this gift? I would say back in high school, uh, really? I just uh, felt like I could see all 22 players and kind of see it before this is getting ready to happen and being able to remember, man, all right, I remember watching them play this team in this area and this scenario and, and, and coaches are creatures of habits and I think he's gonna do this again, and, and you have the exact right call for that. Not all the time, because no one's perfect in their play calling. There's been some games where I thought, man, he's got my number and I, I'm, I have nothing, you know? But not many. Coach, we are so blessed to have you here at Liberty. Can't wait to see what else you have up your sleeve. Hope you guys have continued success this season. Thanks again for your time. 
Girl, thank you. Thanks for doing this. I enjoy this. Hey, we can stay longer if you want to break down some more film. <laughs> we'll do it again. <laughs> Sounds good. Thanks, Coach. You got it. Well, Emily, first, great job on the H Sluggo. Thank That's you. That's a great term pulling out there. How much did you learn, just all the details that he sees out on the field, how much did you learn about the sport? Oh, so much, Rhett, and I can't wait for our next film session because there's so much more to learn. He even stayed 15, 20 minutes after wow. teaching me more about their base offense, but I just think his ability to see all 22 players on the field and, and figure out these coaches' tendencies and other defensive tendencies and use those plays later on in the game, just so impressive. Yeah, the fact that he can store it away for later is Mental palace. Yes, there you go. Matt, did you learn anything about all that? Well, I learned that if he ever needs to hire an offensive coordinator, Emily's ready. Oh, like, yeah. She's Let's ready go. for that. No, really, really interesting stuff there in that piece. Well, you know what else is interesting? The preseason ace on basketball polls. They are interesting. The conference has released the polls along with the preseason all-conference teams. Now, in the media polls, the Liberty men and women both expected to finish second. For the men, Darius McGee and Elijah Cuffey land on the all-conference team with Cuffey named the preseason defensive player of the year. So, big honor for him. As for the women, Ashton Baker, Emily Lytle were both named preseason all-conference as well. Well, turning our attention to track and field, Liberty coach Pete McFadden was a standout multi-sport athlete during his time at LU. However, it would be his personal experiences growing up that would form Coach Pete into a man that impacts the lives of the athletes around him on a much deeper level than just the sport itself. A small town in uh, South Carolina is called Olanta, South Carolina. Real small town, not very big. Growing up, you know, it wasn't the best ideal situation growing up. You know, we had a lot of tough times. My older brother, my younger brother, my sister, and I, and my mom, lived in a two-bedroom shack. As a young boy, Andrew Pete McFadden lost his dad in an automobile accident. Losing your father, you think you lose your protection, you lose your guidance, you lose a person that's going to mentor you. McFadden's mother, finding herself a single parent, had to work multiple jobs just to make ends meet. This left her little time at home with her children. There was nobody to sit there to help us with homework. It was nobody here to tell us what to do. We learned on the go. She cooked us our meal. She cooked the meal every single day. The meal was on the stove. When we got home, we ate. We did what we were supposed to do. And if we didn't do what we were supposed to do, when she got home, she let us know it. Sports would be an escape for McFadden, with baseball being his first love. But during a game in the 10th grade, a nice grab would catch the eye of a coach from a different sport. Saw me catch a ball that was uh, directly over my head and um, asked me to come out and play football. So. Uh, that's how the football career got started. McFadden excelled on the gridiron at Lake City High School. In fact, his standout play would lead to a JUCO scholarship at a military school in Georgia. I'm definitely in a whole different place, a whole different world, a whole different environment. And that was really difficult for me because uh, that whole freshman year of uh, there being at military school, I went from being best male athlete in my high school to sit in the bench the whole entire year. I played one play. At the end of that year, um, most people went home for the summer. I didn't go home. We didn't go home just because I kind of felt a little embarrassed because, you know, I didn't play, uh, play any um, my freshman year. Determined, McFadden put in the work in the offseason, and it paid off in a big way. So I went from sitting on the bench my freshman year and not playing at all to the MVP of my team my, sec my um, sophomore year. So that's my offer to Cincinnati. Wyoming, I had to offer even to Florida State. But while visiting back home, his high school coach would offer some advice. I told him he didn't know I was going yet. He's like, uh, I want you to um, check out Liberty. I had no idea what Liberty was, who Liberty was, where Liberty was at. McFadden ultimately chose the Flames, just as his move to JUCO had been a difficult one. Transitioning to life at a small Bible college took some getting used to. At JUCO, you know, you go from uh, drill sergeants and people and coaches that just curse you out every single day to you come into a Liberty Room environment where they're telling you they love you every single day. And I'm like, hold on, all this love thing is a little too much. An electric kick returner, McFadden ran his way into the record books for Liberty football. He'd also put his speed to good use as a sprinter on the track team. And it would be as a member of that squad where his faith would come to the forefront. But I think they really just changed the culture of, you know, who I was, was just coming to the track team. I just think they had a different kind of culture. The Bible studies, you know, uh, the groups and stuff that they had people. They wanted to get closer to God. They wanted to learn more about God. And that foundation, along with the support of his coaches, provided the encouragement McFadden needed. During a difficult time for his family back in South Carolina, McFadden was planning to quit school and go home to help. 
but an assistant coach stepped in. She just pulled me to the side and she didn't sugarcoat it. She didn't feel sorry for me in that moment because I was thinking about quit. She's like, what are you gonna do when you go back home? Don't you think the best thing for you to do is finish school? That's the best thing you can do for your mom. Tough love that left a lasting impression. I think her telling me that, I can tell that was no, was no games in that. I can tell that uh, she wanted the best for me. And, uh, and it really gave me the opportunity to really sit down and think about the decision I was going to make. After graduating from Liberty, McFadden would end up working in the counseling field. But all that would change with one phone call. Got a call from Coach told me, like, I got a job open. You know, I'm going to put it in the paper uh, in a couple of days. But if you want it, it's yours now. I'm like, wow. I'm like, of course I want it. Core tight, up tall. And not long into his coaching career, God revealed to him his purpose as a coach. When your kids come in here, your, their professors will change, uh, their friends will change, uh, their roommates may change. You'll be, as their coach, the most consistent thing in their lives for four years before they enter into the real world. What are you going to put into them? And that really changed the way I thought, changed the way I coached. Encourage them as we practice today. This new approach would be a blessing to former all-conference sprinter, Abby Flower. Before school, me and my friends, we would always go to Coach Pete's office. After school, if we didn't have a class or study hall, Coach Pete's office. So um, he was always there for us outside of the track. Never more so than in the aftermath of a personal tragedy during Flower's junior season. That experience um, just transformed her life and my life. He just walked me through it and like there were days we'd go to the track and just walk in circles. And it was just stuff like that that really just... <sighs> that really just showed me like he cares more about me than just an athlete. Let's go Bryce, let's go Reed, here we go. More than just an athlete. God has guided Coach Pete McFadden from that two-bedroom shack in rural South Carolina into a leadership role in the lives of many. There you go, guys. Good job today. Give yourselves a hand. It's a calling he doesn't take lightly. We got better. If they have not grown to the place they've got their degree, they're going to go out and be successful in their um, career. They're going to make a difference in their community. They're going to be good parents um, one day. We have not instill that in them, it doesn't matter what we do on the track, because that's what's gonna last them a lifetime. Good job, here we go. Let's go, ladies, here we go. Coming up, we take you inside a recent Liberty softball scrimmage. And who's the best dressed member of the Liberty football team? We find out on the hot seat, that's when Flame Central returns. Where do you want to make an impact? At Liberty University, whatever you're calling, you can gain the hands-on experience and knowledge you need to truly excel in your future career. With over 200 residential programs of study, you can find a degree that fits you and learn from professors committed to mentoring and guiding you along the way. So, what is your calling? Liberty University can ignite it, and your outcome will change the world. Welcome to Liberty University's online programs, where living out your calling with integrity is what you train to do, and getting ready for the future doesn't mean missing out on the now. Because a university is more than buildings and books, and an education should set you free, not fence you in. Welcome to Liberty's global campus, where distance learning was pioneered and evolved into one of the top-ranked schools in the nation. Where protecting your budget your time and your education isn't just a theory, it's our priority. 
Here, degrees in your field reflect industry demands and help get you ahead of the competition. Where college comes to you, but you can come to college too. Game day, homecoming, graduation day, your school, your values, your experience, your choice. Welcome to Liberty University, where we train champions for Christ. Music has the power to bring people together, to unite world cultures, and travel to new places. At Liberty University, you have the freedom to learn and create new music wherever you go. With our new online commercial music degree, you can learn to write, to sing, to play, and produce music anywhere, to lead the next generation of musicians in this country and the world. Back to Flame Central. Football may be the only Liberty sport currently playing games. That doesn't mean all the other teams are just sitting around passing the time. No, they're practicing and competing every day. And to showcase that, we decided to mic up freshman Carly Keeney during a recent Liberty softball scrimmage. I'm good. Thanks, Halo. Yeah, has a good spin. Girl started talking, she said, oh, you're mic'd up. <laughs> I was like, oh, thanks, Chris. I can't say it. Batting six and pitching number eight, Harley Keeney. Well, hi, everyone. Welcome inside Camp Ice Field at Liberty Softball Stadium for our inner squad scrimmage this afternoon. Keeney, 5'9", freshman out of Providence, Kentucky. Woo! It's pizza. Oh, let's try it. Is it good? Not really. <laughs> Why do you want me to try it? They're not bad, they're just not saucy. <laughs> Ew! You go, Ground ball to Savannah Chanel at short, makes the play two way. Yeah, I'm C, yeah, I'm C. That a girl. Go ahead, finish it. All right. Get some more on three. One, two, three. Get some more. Two way for Caroline Hudson. Hudson, a freshman from Paris, Tennessee. Fairly deep. It's up against the wall. It'll one hop the wall. Bishop will score. On the RBI double. Yeah! Oh, my hair just got caught in this. That hurt really bad. Twizzlers or red vines? I don't know what red vines are, so I guess Twizzlers. <laughs> <laughs> like, can you be happy for yourself? <laughs> like, oh, got her. Still to come, the best dressed Liberty football player is who? Here are some of the entertaining answers from the guys themselves when Flame Central returns. Since 1971, Liberty University has had one mission, training champions for Christ. We've been at this for a while, and in the shadow of the Blue Ridge Mountains, we have grown to be a global force. Today, Liberty runs over 100,000 students around the globe, studying across 15 colleges and schools. And among that, proudly over 30,000 military students and their families. Across 700 programs of study, we train as one, nurses, artists, business leaders of the future and today. Together, we work to give back through service trips, local community work, and over 500,000 volunteer hours per year. And we play just as hard as we study with 20 NCAA athletic programs and over 40 club sports teams. So who are we? We are Liberty University and we train champions for Christ.
friends, welcome back to Flame Central. Matt, we answer a lot of important it's questions true. on the show, but none more important than our next topic. Yeah, you know, as we put Liberty football players back on the hot seat, the question everyone wants to know isn't about being in the top 25. No, no, no. no. It's who is the best dressed player on the team? Best dress? I ain't gonna lie to y'all. I'm the best dressed on the team. No swag? It gotta be a top three. And we're excluding me, right? I'm not gonna lie to you, I don't really be looking at people like that. It's shoes, it's clothes, it's keeping yourself together, and your hair, you, you know you gotta be clean. I would have to go DJ. Definitely Stubbs. He always come with some new swag or anything. DJ Stubbs. You got DJ, that boy got a lot of shoes, he be dripping. I say drippy, I say DJ Stubbs. Like, he's low key, you know, he'll just put on a jean t-shirt and some jeans, but like, if he if he really want to step, he'll step. He'll he'll put on the jean jacket and he'll do all that stuff. Who's swagging out? Uh, me. I had to say myself. I'm up to date on my style. I, I get a you'll get some skinny jeans. I got that drip. I got to show you. Uh, Jordans. But I'm trying to shy away from the Jordans. Go a little more grown man fit. I'm gonna have to go with myself. Man. I like to step when I go out. I consider myself a good dresser, and you know everybody on the team can back you up on that. Like, if I'm stepping for real, over chill, laid back, but kind of like. A little drip of salsa, you know, from here and there. So when it comes to the fits, it's gotta be me. It's a slang where it's, it's like for like swag, like dressing. We call it like a little salsa, a little drip of salsa. Definitely Ralph Rusin's. He's got the European fashion thing going. J Mac. I'll go. I'll say J Mac. J Mac. Never really can expect what he's gonna wear. He's showing up in pajamas sometimes, but he still makes it look good. I would say Demario Douglas. Demario. Oh, Demario. Demario, he'd he be dripping too. He's always clean, he always matches, and it's like, it's fresh, you know? He, he has a lot of colors and stuff, so he pops out. JB is one. JB is definitely one. That boy be clean. You know he be clean. <laughs> Some confident individuals on the team, but I think the bigger question is who has the best style here at Flame Central, I think we all agree, Emily, probably yeah, right. Cut, some one. cutting edge style yes. coming from Emily. Saucy drip, you might yes, say, so Red, yeah. you may say, but yeah. we won't get into that. We're about out of time. Yeah. yeah, make sure you go to our website, go to libertyflames.com, and then click the Flame Central link. For Red, for Saucy Drip Emily, I'm Matt. Thanks for watching. <laughs> we'll see you right back here next time.